Blazer Victory Podcast AAC Tournament Special Edition. John Duncan here. And of course, I'm joined as always with my co host, Darian Smith, Jimmy Marion. I've got Nora Kate Duncan with me again for good luck. Guys, before we get to recapping the semifinals game and previewing this championship game, this episode of the Blazer Victory Podcast and all episodes of the Blazer Victory Podcast are brought to you by Cahaba Brewing Company. And I know we said it yesterday, but we even had a bigger crowd. We had to sit outside today. You know, it was St. Patty's Day. There was there was a big event at Cahaba, but they still graciously made space for us. We had basically the whole outside to ourselves today, and you all showed up. Blazer Nation, Blazer Victory podcast listeners, thank you so much for showing up. But thank you again to Cahaba just for sponsoring this podcast and letting us uh, watch, uh, co-host these watch party events. And tomorrow, championship day. We've got the whole inside of the building, the tap room, 215 tomorrow. So go to church if you go to church. Get some lunch. Or hey, if you want to wait, you can wait on lunch. You can um watch out, baby. You can uh <laughs> go to the food truck at Cahaba, the current. They serve amazing food. Darren got some again today, and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna get some tomorrow. But Come out to Cahaba. Jimmy and I have posted reels and clips on Twitter, X, or Instagram, Facebook. We have a blast at these watch parties. Mm -hmm. Like, it is so much better than just watching it on your TV screen by yourself at home. Come on out and celebrate with us and have a good time tomorrow, 215 at Cahaba Brewing Company. And let's pack this thing out. It's championship we're going to the ship. We're say, going it's, it's to the ship. <laughs> it's, it's, we're in the championship. All of the the lows and all of the highs. And I remember us talking about it, and a lot of people had given up. We was like, because I remember feeling the same feeling last year. It was like, hey, at this point, let's continue to build. You never know what's going to happen in that tournament. You never know. Let's continue to build. All our guys started coming along. Shout out Christian Coleman. Yax became the best player in the AAC. Mm. The best. Breaking yeah, right. Left and right. Left and right. Shout out Yax. You know, this, this is the Blaze of Victory podcast, but this is the Yaxel Lindenborg show, too, over here. <laughs> oh, and you've seen Ortiz come alive. You've seen Eric Gaines step up. We've seen so many different guys late, late, late in the season and in the tournament. You never give up on your season like Memphis. You don't throw guys under the bus like Memphis do. You continue to believe in your team. Hey, but shout out to Temple because they did the same thing. Now they get the season. Now, now we here. But first, Jimmy, what you like to say about that USF game? Uh, how you think our guys was out there? We, I know the the vibes was going. John was, you know, we was a couple of beers deep in that thing, you know, and it was a great crowd, oh, yeah. great energy. What's Jimmy's your get first on thoughts of the game? Jimmy's going to get on me for staying out of that beer line. <laughs> that's right. Hey, that's the first thought is, John, stay the hell out of the beer line. My man, John, decided that. What were we at, 14? I think we had our largest 14. lead of the game. John yeah. says, hey, we're going to coast to this victory. We're going to CC's for dinner tonight. He's asking Elizabeth, where can we go? He just says, all right, I'm going to go grab me another beer. He walks back. What was it, John, like a two-point game? Yeah, it oh was like gosh. tied. It was like a one point game. Yeah, it might have been tied. Yeah. yeah. All right. So for anybody that's going to join us tomorrow, just just volunteer to go get John a beer. John, you are not allowed to go to the beer line. He has gift cards. Just yeah. He he can give you a gift card. <laughs> that's right. We we just need you to stay the heck out of there, man. But I mean, what about just even from the beginning? Today started kind of weird because the game before our game was it the Miac? Is that what it was? The championship yes, game? Delaware, Delaware State, State Howard. versus Howard. Hey, shout out to Howard. They're going to the Subway tournament. Hopefully, we're going to be dancing with you. Uh, but we missed, like, what was it? The first, like, six, seven, eight minutes of, like, game time. We're on our phone. Shout out to Thomas, who's got that freaking awesome uh, <laughs> cell service because his was 10 seconds ahead of mine. And he was over there cheering whenever we hit a bucket. And I was like, hey, you're 10 seconds ahead of me. Uh, but. What a weird start. You know, we're watching on our cell phones, and for UAB to come out uh, on an 8-0 run, you know, we're feeling good at that point in time. And, 
you know, South Florida, we know it's a good basketball team. Like they won whatever it was, 16 out of 17 games for a reason. They're, they've got a great head coach. Um, they've been rolling and they responded. So it was like just one of those Darian likes to use like in reference fights. It was like a heavyweight battle. It was UAB kind of gave that initial punch. And then South Florida came back and, and we're wobbling around, you know, after they go on their own 13-0 run. Uh, but what I want to talk about just first is that unlike yesterday, one of the biggest differences in today's game is uh, we talked about the UAB guard play yesterday and how they had to contribute in other ways because shots weren't falling. But today, the shots were falling. So unbelievable game shooting-wise for UAB to make 32 baskets. Uh, That's not a season high, uh, but it's one of the best performances of the season. You see guys like Buddha Johnson and Eric Gaines that together they were 11 of 21 shooting from the field. You throw in Alejandro Vasquez. I mean, these guys were shooting, again, like over 50%. Like those three guards together, uh, I mean, numerous threes. Johnson had three. Eric had two. Vasquez and his return today hit a three as well. So, uh, UAB putting up, what was it, 93 points. A large part of that was because the UAB guards today were not only contributing in other ways, but they were shooting the heck out of the ball, and that was definitely a sight to see. What up, Nora? <laughs> yeah, and Nora, guard, could, shout out to the guards, yeah, man. They yeah. all came to play, man. EG is really playing his best his best basketball, still with two steals again. Um what two for five from three six for six from the free throw line you know 20 points four rebounds five assists two steals handprints just all over the game i really feel like he has confidence in shooting that three ball now um shout out to butter just getting back on track getting back and i feel like we really found a very dependable seven to eight man rotation right uh Still looking for J.D. to uh, really get back in this groove, but he had some key offensive rebounds today. It wasn't his best game, especially that technical, but that that rebounding really, really, really helped us. You know, I was looking at plus minus a little bit, and I see him and Tony, well, only guys like in the minus um, in that in that area. But that doesn't – plus minus doesn't show – it doesn't really explain the whole game. And in moments, J.D. was critical. And just with Christian Coleman's coming out party and his versatility, I feel like this just changes UAB's whole D- our DNA. So one thing I was watching and how Temple was really getting some shots off against against FAU is Vlad Golden loves to play drop. Well, when I when I mean what I say, what I mean by drop is in the pick and roll. He doesn't like to come up on the ball. He has to stay because he's not the most mobile big. He is a good center, and we don't really like him here because he flops around a little bit. But but you can't take away from the man's skill and his ability. But he is not able to really come up and play guards. So the um, I believe his name is Hasir Miller from Temple was able to get a couple. And he, this guy came in shooting 28% from three. That's right, yeah. But you can throw numbers out. It's about the moment when it comes to the tournament. Any game – can take on any life of his own what they did they started spamming that pick and roll right so it's either hey we're gonna double Hasir Miller and their their center is undersized Hoffman he's undersized but he can hit outside shots all they did was say hey we're gonna just let it fly and if when it went in today UAB does not have that problem why because we have guys Yaxel Lindenborg and we have Christian Coleman. Both both of those guys are really good coming up, showing how they can switch. Even JD is way better at uh, than Golden with that. We won't have that same problem. We are much bigger. We are a much bigger team overall than Temple. I really feel like we can beat them up. I think that, and I think we would. We almost beat them by thirty last time we played them. Listen, yeah, 28. they needed a buzzer beater to beat UTSA. They beat mm-hmm. Charlotte. They beat FAU. They can, guys, don't start looking ahead. Do not please it, respect a team, every man. opponent. It's respect a every opponent. Put them in the dirt. If you if you can, 
beat them to sleep. I don't want to have a heart attack. I want to get in the tournament, guys. Who would have thought that we would have had an opportunity to get in the freaking tournament and win our first year in the AAC? Oh, my God. What an amazing job by AK. Did y'all know third straight year in the conference championship game? Yeah. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, man. Come on. Talk to me, man. Oh, I'm hype. I'm hype, but I am cautiously optimistic, but I am so excited and so happy for this team. Yeah, well said. I mean, guys, we know the record. Look at Temple. Um, I mean, I know we beat the brakes off of them by almost 30. That was before the gambling incident. They <laughs> flagged everything. And they've been playing hit, like hard since since then. Hey, so, what's the speaking of gambling, John? What's going to be the line, and how far is it going to move on the on game day? To keep an eye on it, bro. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they FAU is what 12 and a half, 13 and a half, something like that point favorites over a Temple today. It didn't matter. Temple still got the straight up dub. Um, I, I if I'm a Vegas lines maker, I'd make it. You know, we we talked Jimmy and Darren. And we and talked a, a little bit about. Ooh, that's deep. I was gonna say eight and a half. Yeah, yeah, eight eight to nine. Um. I would make it, and it'd, it'd probably be bet up to you uh, even more than that. But, guys, ha- have we talked about I- – I know we're running long. We're already at 12 minutes. But have we talked about n- not just the job that Yax did. Yax got in foul trouble early on in this in the semifinals game against South Florida, and we all three looked at each other and were like, oh, man, that's that's not good. In fact, Jimmy, at some point, you know, we, we, we looked at each other, and you had said that, hey – only down by two, and you, you you told me that Yax is on the bench with two fouls, you'd probably take it. And you probably would, you know, against the number one seed. Um, but we've got to have the bigs, and this is a broken record with this team, but you really have to have Yax, J.D., Christian Coleman, out all at least two out of the three out of foul trouble early on. Because if they get in foul trouble against this Temple team, then that kind of works right into – kind of how Temple plays, you know, being aggressive, at least the last couple couple games. I mean, I'll be honest, guys. I have not watched a lot of Temple basketball <laughs> this year, but I, I sure as hell watched that game. Hey, we all thought that we were going to be destined to meet against FAU again. Man, they were up, what was it, like eight or nine against FAU? Like, yeah. this isn't a joke. Like, this team is rolling right now. And we're going to have, hey, we're going to have to have buy-in. We're going to have to want it, like Darian said. But this is the fifth day that they're going to be playing basketball in a row, five games in five days. Pound it inside. Pound, yeah. Take it to them, man. Just take it to them. Exhaust any, any, <laughs> any, any, any chance that they might think. Yeah, well, Pound that's what – <laughs> Yeah. That's what like that's what I'm looking at though, guys. Is like <laughs> that's <laughs> that's what I'm looking at is uh, since the UAB game, UAB put up 100 on them on March 7th. Since then, uh, UTSA had 82. But then when you look at the games thereafter, they held UTSA to 61, SME to 60, Charlotte to 54, FAU to 73. We know how prolific the FAU uh, offense is. And so, if you're going to win a fifth game in five days. What are they going to do? I feel like they're going to chew the clock. They're going to try to be physical themselves. Good. Like, I feel like I'm completely okay with that because of the way that Yaks plays, the way that Coleman's playing right now. Like, Yaks brings, we know this right now, but Yaks brings a completely different versatility to the game than someone like Golden, right? So, I don't even know what the guy's number is, Hoffman. You know, he's going to have a tough cover. I think he's like 6'5", and he's got some girth on him. But Yaks, the way that he gets those angles and gets those boards, if Yaks can stay out of foul trouble, this, in my opinion, is one of those opportunities where you might see a 25 and 15 out of somebody like Yaks in an opportunity to get a conference championship. And that's what really excites me. Um, but... I'm just way more emotional today in this podcast because I'm like, I told the guys before we got in this, like this brings out like 12 year old, 20 years ago, like Jimmy, like just thinking about NCAA term and all that stuff. And I got to calm down because we got a game left. We got a game left in Temple. If you overlook them, UAB, please don't overlook them. That is exactly what has happened all tournament long don't be too cool for school this game is on espn what have we been talking about all season being on national television big 
moments, promoting the brand. You know what promotes a brand? Being on everybody's bracket. And That's winning. what promotes your brand. And oh, winning in advance. Oh, you know, so watching that game, you know what they talked about half the game? What's that? Oh, man, somebody's going to be uh, – the American is a too mm. big league now. Somebody is not going to get in. Somebody's not – UAB getting in, right? That's right. Like, Let's, go. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Sorry, well, whoever it is, Seton Hall, Virginia, you know, Indiana State, whatever. Hey, hey. we need we it's we need to kick that door down. And if we handle business, I think we can make some noise because the teams and how we play earlier and how we develop, we we aren't a team, we aren't uh, we aren't pushovers. We aren't we have legit guys that can make a run. Why can't we be FAU? Of last year, yeah, you know why not us? And I feel like we, uh, our guys from AJ Vasquez, the games, mm. the X. I feel like everybody is playing their best version of ball. Shout out to Coach Andy Kennedy and that staff, bro. Like what they've been able to do here at UAB for all these years in a row. You know, we came this close to winning the NIT last year. Um, it's just building blocks, man, and it's just consistency consistency and as fans we take that for granted too much here at uab too much but now we have a chance we we just got into the aac and we have a chance to win the tournament and get into and get into the ncaa championship i mean tournament Ooh, ncaa championship god are you to, <laughs> are you speak it to existence to well it is the ncaa championships yeah so yo okay. can y'all imagine if we make a crate i will i will cry <laughs> if we make a run i might yeah. cry tomorrow if we get in <laughs> Hey, well, Cahaba oh, yeah. would be definitely loving us if they make a big run in March yeah, <laughs> to have those watch hey, parties. Packed out, man. Go I'm ahead, telling man. you. Man, we win the NCAA championship. I mean, I'm 10, 20 beers deep in, standing on top of tables, <laughs> crying. Guys, guys, we were just a few weeks ago. We, we had lost at home to Wichita State. And we Rice. had lost at home Bro, to we Rice. Were down. 20 points to both of those teams. Yeah, or 19 yeah. to Wichita and 22 to Rice. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. Like this season has been just an unbelievable ride. And none of that matters. We talked about Rice, that. Yeah. We talked about We're here. That, We're here. Hey, here. Yax, we talked about we talked about our guy Yax, but 18th double double. We'll give him a shout out on X. He his stats that he's breaking. Like, he broke the Trey Jemison rebounding stat in, what is it, 32 games? Trey got to play 39 last year. Yax did it in 32 games. Like, he 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 broke the record from Elijah Millsap, who also had a little short stint in the NBA as well. Like, oh my gosh, this guy is just crazy. Like, this is ESPN national television. Like, this is Yax time, man. Let's go. It's time for it's time as much as that scares me. <laughs> but it's time for the it's time for the world to see him. Now that yeah that scares me. That scares me. You know, Yax is a blazer. I want him to be a blazer next year. You know, I got a feeling guys are gonna come with that bag. You hear me? Like they're gonna come with the bag. I'm talking a million. I believe yeah. he's worth that much for a team. He is honestly he's worth more than that for a team, in my opinion. Because consistently game in and game out. This ain't like it's like a game here or there. Like how he started off this game, he would his numbers would have been, been way better if he didn't, wasn't in foul trouble. He had six points, five rebounds, five minutes into the game. Completely he was doing it all, man. And that second foul he picked up, just hustle play. Like it was just one of those where he and the guy were going both half for the ball and he picked that up. But just to bring that all full circle, we're giving kudos to the staff. We're giving kudos to Yaks. Like – for AK to bring Yax back in and trust him, like a guy that again, this is his first year playing. That's a that's a big game, a big semifinals matchup for him not to pick up that third foul. And he wasn't like just uh, you know, they weren't just going straight at him every single time he was giving up layups. There was one time I think it was prior where he wasn't going to take that you know foul and pick up what might have been his fourth. But he went out there and he was still making plays. And what and he still played 28 minutes, I think it was. He was in foul trouble the whole time, and for him not to let that get in his head and for him to keep his composure 
and to do that and still put up the stats that he did, man, I just we 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 love that guy. Like yeah. we love that guy, man. And I think Temple is going to resort a lot of resources to him and Christian. They mm-hmm. they are not a big team. At least USF had prior down there, right? They had some guys that can bang yeah. around. Shout out to the squad for getting all of those guys. We filed young blood out. You know, people can say, awesome. I saw some USF fans talking about the riffs. Dog, we had guys in foul trouble too. Like we were okay. in foul trouble before y'all were in foul trouble. Let's chill on that. Like let's yeah. let's don't 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 go to the riffs because the game was called that way for both teams. Mm. I can I understand the frustration, but the game was just a ticky tacky kind of that's what the refs were calling. And so we both were in foul trouble. We just Beat that, beat that butt a little bit, you know. You know what I'm saying? But we're gonna get here, and I really think this is an opportunity for us to really enforce our will. And it's gonna come down to shot making because I believe we'll have a lot of open shots, and we saw our guys hit. They hit them this uh, this game. So if I'm Temple, I'm living and dying. I can't. You, if guys are getting fouls and getting to the free throw line, and Yaks and Christian Coleman and JD are just eating up everything inside. You're not – you can't win that way. Take your chances with butter missing. Take your chances with game missing. Leave it open, but you got to – you got to – you got to take away something and give up something. Um, so I believe they'll devote their, devote their resources more so inside. And I think we got – I think Gangs and Butter, Ortiz, Vasquez, I think all of these guys are ready for this moment. Leave them open if you want to. I have utmost confidence and if we get that three point ball rolling, I think it's over with. I think we blow him out. If we can't hit shots, and you got guys like Hazir Miller doing step backs for threes and stuff, guys, just you know, hold on. But we're gonna see what happens. I believe in our Blazers. I can tell you that much. Hey, for y'all, for y'all that are there in person in Fort Worth, keep cheering them on, man. Like, keep cheering yes. them on. Bring yes. that energy. Like, they're gonna need it. Uh, for this ball game, we're cheering from Cahaba, but shout out to y'all that went to this thing and are getting to ride this. I see y'all in the, I see y'all in the stands. Hey, I saw two UAB fans on that Temple broadcast that were cheering for I Temple. Saw I saw standing y'all. Up. Yeah, I saw y'all. Yeah. Yeah, Number go, one UAB. Hey, shout out. We saw you on there cheering for Temple. Now tomorrow you better not be cheering for Temple, but. Yeah, shout out to y'all. Make some noise, man, because we can only do so much yelling from Birmingham, but y'all are truly giving them that energy that they need to bring this thing home. Definitely. Well, again, guys, UAB was able to get it done in the semifinals of the AAC tournament, 93 to 83 over South Florida. So UAB will square off against Temple tomorrow at 215 in the AAC championship. We certainly hope that everyone listening and watching will join us at Cahaba Brewing Company tomorrow. Get there a few minutes early. Get there probably around 2, 145, 2 to make sure you get some space. But, hey, we are definitely – we're hype, man. We're hype. It's going to be hard to go to bed tonight, but we are so hype about this ball game, and just hope that the guys pull it through. You know, Yaks, uh, JD, Christian Coleman, EG, Ortiz, Vasquez, all of the guys. We're going to need you tomorrow. But Jimmy, you want to send us out? Please, God, let's do this thing. Let's win this championship. Go Blazers. <laughs>